So now the Republican tax cuts are uh, in effect. And, uh, of course, we have seen a lot of rich people get a lot richer. In fact, that's the whole purpose of the tax cuts. Uh, conservatives will look at this, and, and they have looked at this, and they're defending this and saying, well, look at all the money that went to the rich. I mean, that's a lot of money, but a lot of people got tax cuts too, and that's just going to trickle down. It's going to trickle down later. Right. Still waiting for that to trickle down. Oh, wait. It's never going to trickle down. <laughs> I'm going to show you why. Uh, now, Wall Street, interestingly enough, who benefited from these tax cuts, or at least there's one firm on Wall Street who benefited from the tax cuts, is actually sounding the alarm on the tax cuts. Well, that's very interesting. This is actually Goldman Sachs, uh, who was saying that these tax cuts might now actually plunge the United States into another recession. Fascinating. Now, in a Sunday note, Goldman's chief economist, Jan Hatzius, said in a Sunday note that the U.S. fiscal outlook is not good. Oh, well, that's interesting. Now, again, it, this is taking the overall eco uh, economy as a whole and also, you know, looking at what's going on now and, uh, and, and looking at what's going to happen in the future when these tax cuts uh, have their impact of bigger deficits. Now, that's actually what they're talking about. Now, well, what's funny is that this is going to go contrary to what the Republicans were saying was going to happen when we pass the tax cuts. Oh, no, no. We're going to have more jobs. In fact, this is going to supercharge the economy. Uh, wages will go up. More, there will be more jobs. And, uh, uh, and of course, the jobs will pay so much better, have better benefits. And then that will somehow lead to us not having a deficit. Fascinating. It's, it's strange how that they think that that actually works out. Supply side, man. Uh, those are supply siders. They have no idea. Uh, but anyway, now, did that happen? Did we get more jobs at least? Well, I mean, the job market is fairly decent. Unemployment is down. That That is a good sign, right? But we've also seen little changes when it comes to pay. Pay is still relatively stagnant, uh, growing at very, very low uh, percentage points, about 2%. Uh, people are still very, very underemployed. Again, uh, the minimum wage is about seven twenty-five an hour. So you have people that are working jobs um, that pay very, very little, sometimes two, three jobs just to get by. And again, the unemployment rate, yeah, I just mentioned it before, right? Uh, about 3.9%, I believe. It's, it's never been a good indicator, though, uh, of real unemployment, which is actually likely higher okay likely quite a bit higher as it doesn't count people who have stopped looking for work so okay uh, anyway it's not really the tax cuts aren't really what they sold it as right and the american people of course uh largely haven't been buying it i mean look um there were individual tax cuts that, uh, you know, affect a lot of people, uh, the middle class, but they sunset. And oftentimes, they're actually not all that substantial. Right? I mean, Paul Ryan, the best thing that he could find is a woman saving like a buck fifty every week. Wow, you could get like a candy bar or something. Well, if you're lucky. <laughs> it depends. You ain't going to get no king size, that's for sure. But anyway... Uh, look, what happened with the tax cuts is, again, 83% of it went to the top 1%, the richest Americans, right? Now, what did they do with that money? Well, they were supposed to create jobs, right? Well, they didn't. They went and bought back their stock. Uh, in fact, they bought back hundreds of millions of dollars worth of stock um, as soon as uh, billions of dollars worth of stock, Um and all that money, what it, I mean, it went to the shareholders. That's what, that's what happens when you buy back stock. It inflates your uh, stock prices and your shareholders get more dividends. That doesn't trickle down. That doesn't go to you. That goes in the executive's pockets. So now that helps the shareholders short term, yes. But for an economy that is based on consumer spending and consumers having more money, well, that's disastrous, right? Now... 
there's other ways that it's disastrous in the long term. Uh, and this is what Goldman Sachs is going to get into. Now, the firm, according to the New York Post, dismissed economic projections by the Congressional Budget Office as too optimistic and said that the deficit could spike for about two and a half times to $2.5 trillion by 2028. Damn. So, look, here's what President Obama did, right? So he brought the deficit down to six, seven hundred. No, think about four billion, four hundred billion dollars. Now, Republicans, of course, uh, of course, still scream and howl about, oh, my God, the deficit, the deficit, the deficit. Well, Donald Trump is going to increase it by two and a half times by 2028. That's disastrous. <laughs> That's if you care about the deficit, right? And there are a lot of people who do. Now, Goldman notes <clears throat> that in one scenario, the bond market could punish the U.S. for growing its debt levels by making it more expensive to borrow, thereby increasing deficits further. That could end up, they say, constraining econ any economic stimulus packages during the next recession, which isn't likely for the next couple years. Well, that's good to know that it's not likely for the next couple years. But if we ever do have another recession, well, Goldman Sachs is saying, look, you're not going to be able to do any stimulus. And not that the Republicans would do stimulus, um, but nonetheless... That option wouldn't be available. Now, we know what the Republicans would do. They would do more austerity <laughs> because that's what they believe in. That's what they, that's what they love, as long as it doesn't touch the rich. Now, I want you to understand something, right? So, yeah, we're talking about deficits, right? Uh, deficits don't matter. <laughs> they don't matter to Republicans because, as you just saw, they just blew up the deficit, right? Now, Democrats, for some reason, do seem to care about deficits now, which is, of course, the complete opposite of what Republicans always see. Republicans love to do projection, right? So their projection is, oh, Democrats, wild spenders. I can't believe they'd spend so much money. Oh, look at the deficits under all these, uh, these Democratic presidents. But Republican presidents have actually spent more money and have actually put more money, uh, or, or I should say... Um, increase the deficit and the debt even more than Democrats. But again, it's what they do. It's projection. What the Republicans love to do is they just love to get tax cuts to their donors and put more money into the military. So that's what they love to do. So that, of course, uh, goes to the, what is it, the, the, the two Santas um, thing. So Republicans, they promise tax cuts and they blow up the deficit. And they put more money into the military, like I said. The Democrats, they used to be really, really popular because they would do all these popular programs. <laughs> For example, Medicare, the minimum wage, Social Security, right? Now, Republicans kept losing over and over again because Democrats would actually say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do programs that actually help you <laughs> in your daily life. And we're not just going to help the rich like the Republicans are. The Republicans, as I said, their only trick is... Well, we like the rich, we are rich, and we want to give ourselves tax cuts, and we want to give our buddies in, in, in industry, uh, we want to give them more tax cuts, and we want to be able to give them more subsidies. So we're going to funny, funnel all this money to the rich, to ourselves. Look, the Republican Party, I mean, the whole idea, the whole purpose of the Republican Party is to funnel money to the rich. So that's what they've always done. But they figure out, well, wait a minute, we're really, really unpopular because all we do is give money to the rich. Well, we're going to have to try and give them something. I know. Let's give them tax cuts and say we're doing it for them. So now you're going to save a little bit of money, but then the rich are going to save a whole ton of money. And we're going to do aggressive marketing campaigns. We're going to come up with buzzwords. We're going to, you know scare people with debts and deficits and all that stuff uh, and then promise tax cuts. We're, we're going to be the new Santa. And that's what happened. And the Democrats since then, of course, have been scared because every time the Democrats even try to propose doing something progressive, here come the Republicans to say, you can't do that. How are you going to afford that? You can't afford that. You can't pay for that. And the Democrats are too scared to actually do progressive policy. That's what's going on here, right? 
And look, Republicans, whenever they get in power, they make it rain for their donors. And now Democrats, as I said, some Democrats are doing the same thing. Um, and other Democrats are just too scared and have fallen in and, and really have bought into the Republican uh, mantra of, well, we can't, we just can't afford it. Uh, we have to do tax cuts for the middle class. So the Democrats have unfortunately become your center right party, while the Republicans have gone up to crazy town. Now, here's what's uh, going on with Goldman Sachs, right? Now, Goldman Sachs isn't saying this for the benefit of Democrats, right? No, no, no. See, Goldman Sachs benefits from these giant tax cuts. Of course. Their ex-president, Gary Cohn, helped come up and pass these tax cuts. So do you think that they're actually against him? I don't think so. I don't believe it. I mean, look. Yes, uh, Goldman Sachs, they actually can't ignore facts, unlike the administration. They're like, yeah, what we did is, yeah, the, the tax cuts that we support, that we benefit from, did blow up the deficit. That's true. I can't, we can't run away from math, right? So those are the numbers, right? Uh, but look, this also helps Republicans, this report. Why? Because Republicans will spin it and they'll say, well, look at how much Medicare and Social Security are bankrupting the country. We had best privatize them. First, we got to cut the spending. Then we got to privatize it. Well, see, that's the entire goal, right? We obviously need to cut Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, food stamps, and all these things that, you know, go to the poor and the, and the middle class, all these programs, uh, because, I mean, those are the things that are causing our deficits. I mean, we can't raise taxes, right? I mean, what are we going to do? Yes, the ta uh, Trump tax cuts. And, and here's, here's, I guarantee this will be the game, right? If we're going to talk about the tax cuts, and they say that the Trump tax cuts are causing, uh, could cause us to go into a recession. So here's probably their solution. Well, we'll just roll back the tax cuts from the middle class. And then we'll have to cut entitlements. Oh, I can almost guarantee that that is the argument they're going to come up with. That's the solution, right? Eliminate the tax cuts for the middle class and then cut the entitlements then we can finally balance the budget or we could give more tax cuts to the corporations. We can lower the corporation or the corporate rate to 10% and then that will boost the economy. That's their whole game plan. They will never call to raise taxes on the rich. They will never call to raise taxes on corporations. I would be shocked if Goldman Sachs came out and said, you know what? We should raise taxes on ourselves on corporations and on the rich so we can balance the budget. I doubt very, very much that they will do that. Again, if they do, I will be really, really fucking surprised. Uh, but we know that Republicans, they never will. I mean, look, you want to talk about what happened in Kansas. Kansas is a great example of trickle-down economics gone run amok, right? It got so bad that even Republicans are like, okay, yeah, we're going to have to raise taxes on somebody because it turns out when you cut taxes and you cut taxes and you cut taxes to the bone, you can't pay for things. Who knew, right, uh, as a state that you can't do that? I think we all kind of knew that. Uh, but nonetheless, they had to find out the hard way and they decided, well, I guess we're going to have to raise taxes. But you think national Republicans are going to learn that, mess, uh, that, that lesson? Well, unlike the states, the federal government could just print whatever money they want. And so what are they going to do? Well, they're going to keep printing money, borrowing it from themselves, essentially, uh, and cutting taxes for their donors until their taxes are at 0%. So there are 0% corporate taxes, 0% taxes in the rich. That's what they're going to do. That is the entire plan. And then while they're looting the nation, they're going to let everybody on Medicare, Medicaid, and food stamps and, you know, Social Security and all that, these different programs, they're going to let those programs die. And unfortunately with it, they're going to let all those people who depend on those programs also die.
not that they're completely malicious in their intent. It's just they don't care. They don't have any empathy for other human beings, human beings that aren't wealthy and privileged. Oh, those guys on food stamps, look, they either get a job or they die. Not my problem. Not my problem whatsoever. Look, if you think I'm being unreasonably harsh against Republicans, look at their policies. Look at the stuff that they've said publicly and privately. You know I'm right. They don't care about people. And one more thing. If there is a recession, and that is possible, we know that the number one thing that Republicans are going to go to is blaming rich people, or I'm sorry, not rich people, poor people, seniors, and immigrants, and protecting rich people, and making sure that no one ever, ever raises their taxes. That is something that you can 100% count on, because that's how the Republicans work. They are the party of the rich, they're the party of the corporations, 100% bought lock, stock, and barrel. They are owned by the corporations, and that's who they will always work for. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.